We spoke earlier to Matt Canavan about the absolute fundamental need. If you're going to have renewable energy, you can't do it without some form of baseload. And there are only two to choose from, fossil fuels or nuclear. Well, if we're going to go nuclear, which no one in government is talking about, but clearly we should, we need to understand it. And one person has looked into it and has got tomorrow evening at 8pm, which you must not miss, Going Nuclear, the documentary with Chris Kenny, who joins us now. Chris, great to see you back on Outsiders. Great to be back on the Outsiders. I've got my vaccine passport here, mate. I'm, <laughs> we I'm good to go. <laughs> we need an Outsiders passport. Yeah. Indeed. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah uh, looking forward to this to tomorrow night. Yeah, so tell us about it. Well, the issue is, Rowan, as you know, look... Let's put to side the argument, to one side the argument of whether we need to get to net zero, right? That's a whole nother argument. Yeah. But as you know, everybody across the world is talking about net zero by 2050. So many governments, companies, corporations, activists are pushing towards it. It seems that the inevitable government policy is going to head in that direction. So we ask the question is, how do you do it? Can you do it? And the thing is that's so overlooked in the debate, especially from the two major parties in this country, is they both try and pretend that you can actually do it with renewables and storage. Quite obviously, that can't happen. That's an impossibility. Every country around... Most developed countries have sort of played around trying to do that. They can't get there. So we look at the, the obvious silver bullet solution, as you mentioned, the baseload power, and that is nuclear energy. Everybody wants... Energy that is reliable, affordable and now emissions free. Well, there's only one form of energy that fits those three criteria. That's nuclear. So we have a good look at that issue, whether it's the solution globally and also in Australia, of course. Rita? Well, we've seen this used elsewhere. It's not like we're uh, reinventing the wheel here. We've got France, Sweden, heavily reliant on um, nuclear energy. What is the hesitation here? Because we even had an essential poll come out recently, a left-leaning essential poll, showing majority of Australians were favourable to nuclear energy. So why are our politicians so gutless on both sides? Yeah, I reckon it's changing, Rita. I think the politicians are sort of dealing with what they thought the political view, the public view was a year, two years, ten years ago. But the latest polling showing that people are pretty, uh, uh, pretty focused on nuclear and pretty eager to at least consider it because... They can see what's going on. You mentioned France. I mean, France has been 70% nuclear power for the past, you know, five decades. Mm. And compare that to Germany, a similar-sized country, similar economy, where they've tried to get rid of nuclear and they're trying to go uh, renewables and emissions-free. Well, they're in all sorts of strife in Germany. They don't have enough power. Their emissions are going up because they're having to bring in Russian gas and burn more coal. Their prices are going through the roof. They're relying on some nuclear uh, electricity coming in from France, whereas France has got reliable, cheap, uh, affordable energy, and they're pumping more of that across to the UK when they need it and the other countries. Other countries in Europe. So France actually is the test case. And as you heard, as you showed earlier, Boris Johnson, well, they have about 20 per cent uh, electricity coming from nuclear in the UK already. Well, they're looking to upscale that because unless they do, they simply won't get to net zero. It's impossible. Chris, in a moment, I'm going to be talking about the lunacy of green hydrogen, this fantasy that's been trotted around for billions of dollars. But uh, on the nuclear issue, James... Well, I just want to ask about that, Chris, and the politics of it, because people keep saying, you know, oh, the economics don't stack up, it'll take too long. But when you look at, you know, these renewable things, well, the jobs that are created are pretty much whippersnippering around the bottom of the windmills, whereas if we were to do a nuclear program, Chris, wouldn't that create a great nation-building project that would employ everybody from concreters to nuclear physicists? I tell you what, James, you, you've hit on something that does amuse me greatly when you talk about these issues. How many times do you hear these people saying, oh, nuclear, it'll cost too much? These are people who have backed in renewables over the past two decades <laughs> that have cost us, like, f minimum $40 billion to give us less reliable, more expensive electricity. So if you'd spent that $40 billion on, the, on, on a nuclear energy program, we would have at least reliable energy, if not cheaper. So, yeah, absolutely, you've got to look at this. In fact, some of the 
experts I speak to in this documentary talk about the fact that any serious country, all serious developed countries on the planet have nuclear programs. So apart from the energy they generate, it's the technology, the expertise. Uh, they're actually serious countries about their uh, technological development into the future. And Australia risks getting left behind if we don't develop all those technologies. But it is a, it is a no-brainer. <laughs> the renewables people talking about costs... That exactly, is hypocrisy. Exactly. <laughs> a bit rich, isn't it? Um, well, that's tomorrow night, Going Nuclear, the, the Clean Energy Debate. That's the name of it. Tomorrow night, 8pm. 8, 8 o'clock. We'll be watching. On. And I'll, I hope ScoMo's going to be watching. Angus Taylor, Mike, Josh Frydenberg. Few of them might want to <laughs> check in. Just as long as the, the wind is blowing, they should be able to tune <laughs> in and watch. <laughs> Chris Kenny, thanks so much. Cheers, guys.